Welcome to The Advocate, a program that thrashes out all the topical issues of the day. When you are in government, you don't see nothing wrong mm, with exactly. whatever is happening. Self the moment impressed. you are out there, everything is that wrong. Is, you can't even see yes. many women now, and when they're there, they're not even really making a mark, and then they have an NYSC problem, and this is that. Really? It's disastrous for a president to, even to be unaware of it, the chief it's justice. It's a ploy. It could be a strategy. That strategy was it's very, a terrible, <laughs> terrible strategy. <laughs> because the box stops at your table. Whether it's that we don't look after our cities, and quite frankly, Nigeria is becoming a very ugly place. Mm. When you are the only one feeding the people with this news, and there is nobody countering them, it becomes, you know, the, the news. I'm not one for playing lip service. If you say you do something, then do it convincingly. What do we understand by inclusive education? Inclusive education means that all students attend and are welcomed by their neighbors, their neighboring schools, in an age-appropriate regular classroom and are supported to learn. Contributions, participations, and every aspect of the school life is done in that inclusive setting. Inclusive education is about how we develop and design our schools, classrooms, programs, activities, so that all students learn and participate together. Inclusive education is about ensuring the quality of education for all our students by effectively meeting their needs in a way that is responsive, acceptable, respectful and supportive in the common learning environment. What are the advantages of a supportive learning environment? It enables the children or students to fully participate in learning in the environment whereby they're able to share things with their peers in the chosen educational setting. It provides a positive climate, promoting a sense of belonging and ensuring students progress together in the appropriate personal, social, emotional and academic space with goals. The concept is responsible to individual learning needs to take time to specifically look at the level that each child is being taught and the practice and the principles are communicated. Common learning environment provides is an inclusive educational system whereby we must mix children who may be at a lower peer level in the same setting, same environment, and same group. Despite the passing of the Discrimination Against Persons with Disabilities Act by President Buhari on the 23rd of January 2018, which states that a person with a disability should have the unfettered right to education without discrimination or, dis or segregation in any form we still see Nigerian schools practicing integration and in some institutions still practicing segregation. So, I would say integration, what do I mean? Segregation, we know what that means. But integration means a system whereby children with special educational needs are educated on the same platform with children that don't have needs and are given the basic um, educational setting. But the important factor here is the duty of care. The duty of care and i repeat myself the duty of care this is a common practice that we have established now whereby integration is taking over inclusion inclusive education differs from integration or mainstreaming models of education which tends to be concerned principally with educating the child with the disability as opposed to making it inclusive for all by contrast inclusive education is the right of the child to participate in school and the duty of care is on the school to be able to make sure that that child has everything he needs despite the fact that he has a disability. My question therefore to this forum is how many Nigerians are aware of the Disability Act? How many schools are prepared for inclusive education? Are we willing as a people to accept children with various physical and mental needs in our mainstream school? That's what I thought jump too. Jump in quickly, so that I know that this one might. <laughs> <laughs> you know, because I, I know you know your integration and inclusion. If I get you right, you're basically saying it's one thing to put them there; it's another thing to actually make them welcome. Yes. And make sure that you know they don't they feel a part of the group. Yes. Okay. And that's what leads me to my own understanding and where I want to take it from. You know, laws are one thing. You asked that we are aware of the law. Yeah. You know, laws are one thing. How you actually make it applicable is another. So you have a legal setting where people accept, you know, there's a rule here that you should accept anybody. But mm. 
you know, the heart is quite a different matter. Mm -hmm. If people personally then take it on board, if somehow they buy into it, then the law, they, they will supersede the law. Yes. You know, where you now have to start policing schools to make sure they do it by the letter, you've lost altogether. Mm -hmm. So I just want to give an illustration because I have two children on, on the autistic spectrum, okay. on the autistic spectrum. My daughter goes to a Sunday school, you know, so she's going to be 16. And she's in the Sunday school at church. And they just put her there. And because her sister is now old enough to be in the same Sunday school, she tells me, ah, you know, Chinya is here. She's not doing anything, you know, shouldn't I move her? And I'm like, oh, because she's there now, she's my eyes. I then go to the teacher there very quickly and I say, is there no way you can engage her? I know she doesn't have the same understanding. She's not able to communicate in the same way. But if you're telling a story about, say, David and Goliath, can you not, she likes coloring, can you not give her? So I start suggesting. You know, the lady is almost like taking her back. And I'm thinking, but in my mind, I'm thinking, I'm aghast. Why didn't you think? Oh, you're a teacher. You're yeah. a Sunday school teacher. So you, you want to. Include. She wants to go the extra mile. Yeah. But it's clear that people are tick. Sometimes they're in a flow. I don't think she doesn't want to do it, but she's in a flow. She's in a certain way of doing things. And she hasn't actually thought to herself, oh, I want to go the extra mile. I want to see how I can get into this girl. And she's been coming for over a year. And it hasn't dawned on this teacher to say, so I think it's a partnership. That's really where I'm going. Parents have to want to help, you will have to want to put their children in that common space and, you know, generally partner with the public to, to make them more it, acceptable it, in that space. I hope I'm making yes, sense. Yes, uh, you're right. Yeah. But then I also say it's, it's about reasonable adjustment. If you want to sit down and take care of children, you have to be mindful that all the children will not be the same. So you don't have to, you know, you, it, it, it's not you something, you don't have to wait for the parents. So I feel that a lot of these issues of not being ready for um, inclusive education stems from curriculum. Okay. What is the curriculum? What are the teachers being taught mm -hmm. from the time when they what actually are their become, targets? What are their targets? What are their goals? Mm. Some of them don't believe they will actually see these children in schools because a lot of us have kept our children at home. But what we are saying now is that if you don't become the advocate of your child, your child is never going to get yes. the justice needed. Yes, exactly. So you as a parent, and it actually starts from church. You need to take your children, whatever the disability is, even with the drooling, there, yeah. they're spitting, they need to be sitting with you in the church. Mm. Some parents don't go to church because they're ashamed, because the child makes too much noise. Mm. So what's the essence of being your, your, well, your, neighbor, your, neighbor, your neighbor or, mm. you know, my neighbor, mm. my neighbor's friend, yeah. so to speak? I think that, um, first of all, I, I, you know, I, I want to commend um, this administration for passing the, the yes. Discrimination yes. Against yes. With the Disabilities yeah. Act. So mm. I think that's, that's a very important step, mm. in, in, you know, in, in, in this direction because I think that recognition at the highest level of, of government that, you know, there's discrimination that's going on and we need to put a stop to it. I yeah. think that's very, very, very important. And mm -hmm. I also will say that the, you know, even though a lot of people have put a lot of stick on it, the recent Ministry of, uh, of you know, um, Social Welfare, mm -hmm. I think if they're tasked with this responsibility to push this information, um, but on a more general, because I like to look at, you know, the bigger the picture. Global picture. Yeah. The bigger picture for me here is that, sadly, on this score, the administration, this administration hasn't oh, done no. so well in terms of education, okay. prioritizing education. Mm. Because education goes to the very heart of our future. Yeah. It goes to the very heart of even how we see ourselves. Mm. I think that they need to put more money on it. I saw that this year's budget, you know, it wasn't, it was as if... Six percent. Uh, yeah. We need to do, go, go upwards, even yeah. 10, 12, maybe even 14 percent. Invest in it, training yeah, teachers. Especially invest in training teachers. Okay. And then let them recognize this aspect. Uh, the aspect that is critical because a lot more people will, leave, will now eat all kinds of things. People are going to be born with all kinds of things. You're going to find more people on the Having on the, children on the, with, with, yeah on that on that spectrum. I was just, I was just, I was just gonna, no, 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 true. I, I'm linking it. Go to, ahead. To, anyway. I was just going to add mm. that you know, yes, these are all the you know the trickling effect yeah. from mm. not setting priorities. You know, if we would commit more funds to education and you know training, carrying all the stakeholders, the teachers. Parents. Understanding how they would, you know, like the graduated uh, learning for understanding that these kids have different learning needs, you know, and understanding that. So we need to allocate more funds to education because that's the only way we could, you know, drive this economy. Very important. Yeah, I, I, um, the point I agree with most, most of you have shared, but the aspect about money is where I might deviate a bit because there's this tendency to always throw money at yeah. problems. Yeah. The problem is not the money. Yeah. The problem is there is emphasis on duty of care. 
Duty of care is something that flows from the heart. This is where I was. It doesn't require from. money. Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. I agree. What kind of teachers? Mm-hmm. He currently people go into teaching when they have searched for a job in the job in the banks, in the oil companies, in the telecom. They've searched everywhere. And two, three, four, five years, somebody will not say, that would not know kuzi. That is go and find a teaching job. <laughs> now. Yes, last yes. Bus stop. That's, that's, that's the last bus stop. stop. They actually go into it out of frustration. Mm-hmm. That is the person you are talking about care to, it's not care, it's not money that will solve that yeah, problem. So there is, the, conf- the conversation is that before you are admitted into the educational system, there is a level of training. Compassion. In those days, there's also, there used to have TTC, teacher training colleges, where you go through a different model and curriculum. You are taught, you learn, and you, you, le- you don't just learn teaching methods, you also learn empathy, empathy. and compassion. Yes. So those are not financial I mean, problems. No, they're not. They're not financial problems. So that is where we have to go back to the recruitment process for that Disability Act to work. Go back to the teacher recruitment models this. and totally rejig that process. Then we can start all the way up. Okay. This advocacy was as much to enlighten as it was to stir us up to action. After the break, Saidu seems to be stirring up an increasingly uncommon sentiment by his advocacy. It sort of resembles optimism. <laughs> 